Hey everyone, Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Tag Manager to create your own data layer for your website. So you're gonna be able to capture the user's first name, last name, or email, and honestly, whatever is in that uh, website form, and send it to platforms like Facebook. That's actually something that a lot of you guys have asked me to make a video about, so really excited to share this information with you guys today. So before I dive in and start sharing my screen, I just wanna talk about two things. So number one is who's this video for because it's actually not going to work for everyone and if ever you have an iframe form on your website so for example anyone that is using Calendly it's basically an embedded code that they give you and they have to copy paste that on your website and when the page loads you have your website but the embedded form is like another website on your website and unfortunately for example uh, like if someone's using Calendly your Google Tag Manager is not installed on Calendly so we can't use Google Tag Manager to collect let's say the first name last name an email. Well, it's going to be the same way with honestly most other embedded form. So if your website is using the embedded form, unfortunately, I, you won't be able to create a data layer with the method I'm going to be showing you in this video. And then the second thing that I want to talk about is why you should be setting up a data layer for your website. So some people are like, oh, well, why would I want to send a first name, last name and email to Facebook? Well, the reason you want to do that is because the more data you can actually send to Facebook with, let's say, a purchase or a lead event, the more likely Facebook will be able to match that event with an actual user. Because when you don't send that data, all they really have is potentially the IP, the cookie, uh, and the Facebook click ID. Um, and they probably have a few other things, but they definitely don't have the user's first name, last name, email, and phone number. And if you can also provide that with the event, then it, again, it's just gonna increase your chances for Facebook to match that event with an actual Facebook profile. And that means you're probably gonna get more events being attributed inside your campaigns and your ads. And uh, in the post iOS 14 world, this is this is really what everyone needs here. The more purchases or leads that you have inside your ad account, the more Facebook can learn. So it's gonna help you uh, with your advertising. It's obviously gonna help Facebook learn and trying to figure out who your target customers are because they're gonna be able to finally find them in their Database. So that's why I would recommend for anyone that is not doing something like that to actually just go ahead and do it. Okay, so I'm now inside my demo GTM account and I'm just gonna show you my landing page. So this is my, what my landing page looks like and it is a WordPress landing page. Now, it doesn't matter what platform you're using, it's gonna work for most platforms. Uh, so let me go back to GTM here and what I've done is I've created uh, two tags and two variables. I'm gonna give the option to hit the link in the description of this video to download that and just import that to your container. It's gonna save you a lot of time and it's gonna help you uh, set this up. Um, or you can just watch the video and try to like recreate them yourself, but you're probably gonna save yourself some time if you just grab the template. So you get an admin, import container, and this is where you're gonna select a file that you've downloaded, uh, select an existing workspace, and then usually what I recommend people is to actually merge it and not overwrite it, and all you have to do is save, and then you're gonna have the uh, two tags that, I, that I'm showing you right here, and then the variables. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at the variables first, because my goal is for you to understand how this works so you can tweak it to make it work for your website. And if I open up this one right here, you're gonna see custom JavaScript. I don't want you to get scared by uh, this piece of code here. If you don't know JavaScript or HTML, you're going to be able to make it work for your website, even with no experience. All you have to do is just pay attention and you're going to need to tweak it for your site and it's all going to work. Okay. But don't honestly, don't be scared by this. If you know how to read uh, English, then you're going to be able to figure this out. So here we're basically having a function that is trying to pull a value from an input form. So. What I have here, that's my input form, that's the email. All you have to do is go to your website, click the input form, for example, this one's the email, then you wanna right click it and then you're gonna inspect it. So once you do that, when you inspect the element and your mouse is on the element you want to inspect, you're gonna see it's gonna bring you right to the element you wanna see. Here I have it and when my mouse is on, you can see like this is turning green here. I'll press on it again. So now it's turning green. So just letting me know like, hey, right now you're inspecting the email input and that's exactly what I wanna do. Now, usually on a, on a website form, you have a way to identify each field. And one way to do that is actually by using a name. So here we actually have the name. You can see it says name equals and then that's the that's the value of the name. So that's like a unique almost ID that we can use inside a custom JavaScript tag so that our custom JavaScript variable is gonna know where to go pull the information from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go here and what I'm gonna ask you to do is just paste that 
name right there. And then this is actually gonna be a custom JavaScript that is gonna pull the value from the input form. And all I have to do is now save this. And if I go back to my website, let's say I wanna do the first name, click on the first name, inspect it, it brings me to the uh, proper place for the first name. And then now all I have to do is look at the name again. And here we have it. I'm gonna copy that, bring this here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this tag. I'm gonna change this to first name. And uh, this is where I just enter my name. That's it. And I'm saving this. And then I'm, I'm just gonna do the same thing for the last name now. So perfect, brings me to the last name and we can see the value is right here. Copying this. Perfect, so I just did the email, first name and last name. And I'm just gonna go back here. I'm gonna say in the event where you actually don't see a, uh, a name when you inspect your page, usually most form will have it, but it's possible that yours might not. What At this point, what I recommend that you do is you potentially try to access it with the ID. Um, basically, you need something unique in the form that you can use so that Google Tag Manager knows that, oh, okay, this is this is the input box that you're trying to access to, right? So this is the information that you want from this input box. Uh, but again, usually the name will be there on the landing page. So that, and that's why I've built this video with that variable already created for you. We're not done. We're gonna need to go to tags. And now I'm gonna show you this tag right here. And this one's actually responsible to pushing the information to the data layer. What you wanna do is just simply add all your different keys and value. So this is the event. So it's gonna the name of the event is gonna be lead to data layer. Feel free to change it, but you can keep that as is. And then you can just add more values here. I can add, let's say, the first name. And then the first name is gonna be this one right here. So first name, and then I can add the last name. And there you go. So now I have the lead email, I have the lead first name, and then I have the lead last name. And by the way, guys, you can name this whatever you want. I could name this, you know, first underscore name. It doesn't really matter. The only thing though is whatever the name that you're using here, later when we're referencing to this data layer push, you gotta use that same data layer key. Um, and I'll show you that in, um, in just a few seconds. But let me actually go back down here and I wanna talk to you about the trigger. So the trigger here, it's important that you set up your own trigger because this here needs to be pushed to the data layer whenever, for, for my case, whenever someone hits the submit button. So when someone hits the submit button, the next thing that I want my Google Tag Manager to do is push that to the data layer. And when it's pushing it, it's gonna go and pull the, in this example, the lead email from the input form is gonna pull the first name and it's gonna pull the last name and push that to the data layer. So it's really important that the next action when someone clicks the button is that it pushes to the data layer. So in this example, what I would wanna do is use this trigger right here. So it's whenever there's a click on the on the website and when the click text equals submit. I usually recommend people to use a click for something like that. So for my example, it's almost like I have a service-based business and I'm optimizing for leads, right? I'm, I'm, I want people to submit the form, but let's say you have an e-com store, it might be like the next button for you might be like, I don't know, like uh, checkout or purchase or something like that. And it's when they click that button and that's what sends the tag that, that we just created together. Okay. So you want to probably use a click as your trigger. So now going back here, I can just like fill this information. So test, testing, and then the email, I'll just put a random email. And then I just need to fill up the information here. And now I'm gonna submit the, the form. The way my website works is whenever a user submits this form here, it actually redirects you to your thank you page. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna do it while previewing Google Tag Manager. So I'm just gonna save this preview. So Google Tag Manager is connected on my website. Obviously you wanna make sure that GTM is installed on your website. And if I retype this again, I'm gonna type whatever and random message. Let me just move this here. So when I click the submit button, it should actually fire our uh, send lead to data layer tag. So let me hit this, go back here. 
And if we scroll down, we should see it here. And here we go, we have it. So number 20, it's lead to data layer. And if I go to the data layer, we should see the information. So we have the lead email, we have the lead first name, and then we have the lead last name. But now, if we go back here, you're gonna see that the data layer is gone, unfortunately. So when I go from this page to another page, the, later, the data layer disappears. I um, mean, that's normal. So in the event where uh, you're not using a thank you page as your, let's say your trigger for a lead event for Facebook or a purchase event, let's say for either Facebook or TikTok, then you could potentially just use that, right? So you can say, inside Google Tag Manager, I'm just gonna show you a quick example. You could do it as, oh, well, when there's a custom event and when the custom event is equal to uh, lead to data layer, then that's what sends your lead event to Facebook. But most likely, most people use a thank you page as their trigger. Um, and I, I think that makes sense. So what we need to do is we gotta make sure that the data layer is available on all the pages. And that's why we have this other tag here and I called it persist data layer. So what this does is gonna make sure that your data layer basically just persists on all page. And the kind of the only way that it's gonna disappear, I believe it's if the user like, close the, the window, right? So if the session ends, then the, the data layer is gonna disappear. That's perfect because if a user hits a submit button and then brings you to the thank you page, the data layer is still gonna be there because the session hasn't ended. With this tag, it is gonna allow us to pull the data layer and then from there add that to, let's say a Facebook tag or a TikTok tag. One thing that I will say though, is if ever you're trying to previewing this and it's giving you an error, this is actually why. So you need to go to variables and you need to click on configure and you want to make sure that this one right here the container id is enabled so you want to make sure that this enabled because if you prob if you don't have that and you're trying to preview it it's going to give you like a, an, an error message so now that you have this you need to go to variables and you need to go create a custom javascript variable but that tries to access information from the data layer so it's not a data layer variable this is actually what it looks like so it's looking at the history and seeing if there's any keys called lead email and then it's basically just returning the value so remember up here when I said, oh, well, you can name it whatever you want. This is when it's important for you to, to remember the name that you use because you wanna use that. So for example, let's say I want to do it for the first name, then I go under variables and I can just copy this. And then here, instead of lead email, it would be first name. I can just say first name here and then save that. So now we have a custom JavaScript that is accessing information from the data layer. But again, it's not a data layer variable. A data layer variable will actually be right here and then usually you just name it. So it's a little bit different, but we're still pulling and accessing information from the data layer. And then from here, let's say you wanna send that to Facebook. What you have to do is just, let's say, open up the Facebook template or it could be a custom HTML tag or if it's TikTok, just uh, open up the TikTok template. I, obviously, I would wanna add my pixel ID right here. And let's say this is for a lead. I select lead, enable advanced matching. When I select this, it's gonna open this up and then this is where I can add fields. So I believe we did the first name and the email, but I haven't created the data layer variable for the last name yet, so I'm not gonna add it. And then email, that's this one, first name, DL. Now I like to name it DL just so that when I'm creating my tags, I'll know exactly which one to use and which one not to use. So the other one that like the original custom JavaScript variable that we've created together, this one, you're not really going to, you're not really going to use it. The only time you're going to use that variable is inside your send to data layer, uh, custom HTML tag that, that we've created originally. That's the one that's responsible for pushing really the information to the data layer. But when you're creating your tags, you're going to be, you're going to want to use Use this one right here. So here we have the first name and we have the email. Oh, and actually one thing worth noting is that this one's only going to be available on the next page. So, cause it's doing a, a data layer lookup. It's looking at the history of the data layer. So let's say that my website was set up in a way that when the user submits the form, it just stays on the page and it's just like a thank you page, like message that shows up. But again, the page URL never changes. Then at that point, I would want I would not want to use that data layer variable right here. I would use this variable right here that we've created because the page never changes. So, I don't need to look at the history of the of all my data layer events or my data layer event keys because we don't need to go there. But it's when your website brings the user to a thank you page, at that point that's when you want to use that variable that looks at the history of your data layer. 
So what I want to do next, I just want to go through the whole process. I want to show you how it all connects together. Let me go back here and I'm going to open up my Facebook pixel tag and let me scroll down and let me just create a quick trigger. So it's when the page view and when the page URL and we're going to say when the page URL contains this because that's my thank you page. So uh, let me just save this. And here we have it. So it's my Facebook pixel tag that's sending a lead event. Now, if I go here and I preview my website, again, I'm gonna fill up the information out a random message right here and I'm gonna submit the form. So it brings me here. And now I'm just gonna show you the entire process. So if I scroll down here, I was making some clicks and then that's when I hit the submit button. So it pushed uh, my custom HTML tag that's responsible for sending the lead information to the daily. So if I hit on variable, this is what I mean. So let's say that the user never left the page because the way your website, let's say is set up is that when they submit the form, it just, you know, it's just a confirmation message. Then the email data layer that like the second variable that we created wouldn't work. As you can see, it's undefined, but then the other one works, right? So we have the first name um, and then we have the last name and then uh, we have the email here somewhere. And that one also has a value. But now if I, cause right now I'm still on the initial landing page. When you see here, especially on number, I believe uh, number 27, that's actually when my thank you page load, that's this page right here. So if I go to number 27, look what happened. The email by name, or let's say the first name by name, the value is actually gone. And that's the reason why we're using our persist data layer tag. Now we actually are, again, if we're sending our an event on that page, so now we have the email to data layer and we also have the first name data layer. We don't see the last name because I just did not create, I don't know if you remember, but I didn't create that variable yet, but I would just need to go there and do the same thing we did for the email and um, the first name and then just do that for the last name. But guys, that is really it for the data layer setup. Now what I can do is in all my tags, like TikTok, uh, Facebook, um, and I'm sure there's a lot more, I can actually just go ahead and add those variables and it's gonna increase the likelihood of my events being matched with an actual Facebook or TikTok profile. And this is probably one of the easiest thing that you can do to improve your results because we're not talking about, you know, some super cool creatives here that will take a lot of time to produce or some, you know, some cool landing page hacks. This is just literally sending more information. So on top of what you're already doing, you can just do that. And it's just going to help your Facebook results or your TikTok results. But guys, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to send them in the comment section, or you can join our free community called coffeeandmarketing.org. And I'd be more than happy to answer any your questions there. But that is it. Bye for now.